everyone. In this video, I'm going to look at the relationship between the firm's short run cost curves and the total product of labor curve. And really the task is to link these diagrams here. The first diagram in the top left hand corner is our total product of labor curve. That's TP subscript L. The diagram below is our short run total cost curve. So total cost is abbreviated TC. And the diagram on the right is our marginal and average cost curves. That's marginal cost MC, average total cost ATC, and average variable cost AVC. And we're in the short run here, so all of these curves and the whole discussion is just for the short run. So to start, we're going to think about a firm that has two inputs to production, say labor L, which are our workers, and capital K, so that's the equipment, the machinery, the workspace, etc. Because we're in the short run, we take one of these inputs and it's usually capital as fixed. And this means that if the firm wants to increase the quantity that they produce, they can only do so if they increase the amount of labor that they're using. And so this brings us to our total product of labor curve, which is usually depicted like this. We have labor on the horizontal axis and total product or alternatively total quantity produced or Q on the vertical axis. Now this diagram is going to tell us what happens to the amount of quantity that the firm produces as they add more labor. Now the diagram starts from the origin. So when our level of labor is at zero, no product is produced. Our total product of labor always increases. So the function is upward sloping. Essentially more labor will increase our quantity. Initially, however, as we increase the amount of labor used, the quantity that is produced increases at an increasing rate. So the slope of our total product curve gets steeper and steeper. Essentially, this is telling us that in this section, each additional unit of labor is becoming more productive at producing quantity. Now, this increase in productivity is attributed to the ability of firms to specialize as they add more labor. So as an example of specialization, let's say that I run an office and I have to produce invoices, look after a website, take the calls and produce quotes. Well, this is quite a lot of different tasks for one person. If we add one more person, so one more labor unit, well, we can specialize in at least two sensors that will make our labor units more productive. So firstly, when we add more labor, our staff can concentrate on those tasks that they have the lower opportunity cost in. So maybe I have a lower opportunity cost when I produce invoices and taking calls, and the new person has a lower opportunity cost uh, when they're updating the website and making quotes. So this ability to focus on the tasks in which our labor units have a lower opportunity cost is going to improve our productivity. Secondly, just the ability to concentrate on fewer tasks and not float around can often make a person more productive at that task. So this is the reason, for instance, that in factory lines, our labor is organized so that one person is attached to only one task at any one time. And this is what we call a division of labor. If we look at our short run total cost diagram, this ability to specialize comes out as well, as we increase our quantity, our costs increase at a decreasing rate. And just to recap before we go further, our short run total cost curve has quantity on the horizontal axis, a measure of costs on the vertical axis, and the curve itself is tracking the total cost of producing various quantities. Total cost itself is comprised of a fixed cost, that's FC component, and a variable cost, that's VC component. The fixed cost is the cost incurred even when the firm produces nothing. So visually, this is the vertical axis intercept here, which is positive when Q is equal to zero. So when the firm produces nothing, Q is equal to zero, our total cost is still some positive amount that's equal to our fixed cost. Now, what links the short run total cost curve to our total product of labor curve is that, well, because we're in the short run, in order to increase our quantity, we can only add more labor. So the changes in the slope of our short run total cost function will be due to changes in the productivity of our labor, which we can see from our total product of labor curve. 
So this initial part where our total costs are increasing at a decreasing rate, where we're going to attribute that to specialization, our inputs are becoming more productive. And so each additional unit that the firm makes is cheaper to produce. To say this in another way, the marginal cost of each additional unit decreases. And this brings us to our third diagram. And you can see that decreasing marginal cost right here. So just to recap, on this third diagram, we have quantity on the horizontal axis and a measure of costs on the vertical axis. Our marginal cost is the cost of each additional unit. Technically, it's equal to the change in total cost divided by change in quantity. So another thing to note here is that our marginal cost is actually equal to the slope of our total cost function. So just I'm in the middle of the screen here to write this next bit. If you recall, our slope is equal to rise over run, which is our change in our vertical axis variable. That's our rise over our change in horizontal axis variable. That's our run. And so on our total cost diagram, that vertical axis variable is costs. So specifically total costs. So our change in vertical axis in ch is change in total costs. And the horizontal axis variable is quantity, so our change in horizontal axis is our change in quantity. So we get the slope as change in total costs over change in quantity, which is just our marginal costs, right? So we have this equivalence between our marginal costs and the slope of our total cost curve. If we look at the slope of our total cost function in this initial section, you can see it's getting flatter, so decreasing in value, and well, so does our marginal costs. I'll address our average cost curves a little bit later. Before that, however, let's go back to our total product of labor function. And we can see that after that initial section where we specialize, we eventually get to a point about here where the slope of our total product of labor function goes from increasing at an increasing rate to increasing at a decreasing rate. Let's call that level of labor that this point corresponds to LA and the quantity QA. If you want to get technical, this point is what we call an inflection point, and it signals when our total product of labor function goes from convex to concave. What matters is the interpretation from LA as we add more labor in order to get more quantity. Each additional unit of labor becomes less effective at producing more output. So the slope of our total product of labor function becomes flatter. And really at this point or in this region, we've exhausted all of the possibilities for specialization and any further labor that is added faces a problem and that is a fixed level of capital starts to constrain the productivity of our workers and what we call diminishing marginal product sets in. So in this region, the fixed level of capital becomes problematic. Perhaps, for instance, our workers have to start lining up to use equipment. They have to wait until someone else has finished or they have to share the capital in other ways. And this decreases their productivity. In terms of our total cost, when we have diminishing marginal product, additional quantities of the good that we're making becomes more expensive to make. And our total cost curve will start to increase at an increasing rate. Basically, each additional unit of labor is less productive. So in order to make one more unit of our product, we need to add more and more labor, either another labor unit in terms of another worker or just more time, which becomes more expensive. The point that our cost curve goes from increasing at a decreasing rate to increasing at an increasing rate is at that quantity level QA, the same QA indicated on our total product of labor curve where our diminishing marginal product sets in. In terms of our marginal cost curve, it's at QA where our marginal cost will stop decreasing, our diminishing marginal product sets in after QA, and our marginal cost will start increasing. Again, we can link this upward slope of our marginal cost to the slope of our total cost function, which increases at an increasing rate. So across our marginal product of labor curve, our short run total cost curve and our marginal cost curves, the two dominant factors that matter when we are explaining the shape of these curves are specialization and diminishing marginal product. Now, in terms of our average curves, our average total cost curve is total cost divided by Q, and it comes through like this. It starts off high due to our fixed costs, but it initially decreases. Essentially, our average costs will decrease as labor gets more efficient due to specialization. 
at the point that our marginal cost becomes higher than our average cost, our average cost will start to increase. So like this, I'll say a bit about this in a second. Before then, let's look at average variable cost, which is variable cost divided by Q. And the curve is very similar to our average total cost, except that there is no fixed cost component. So it will start lower than average total costs and it will always be lower than average total costs. Again, due to specialization, our average variable cost will initially decrease like our average total cost curve. However, at the point that marginal cost becomes higher than our average variable cost, our average variable cost will start to increase. So students often get confused about this about our average variable and our average total cost curves only increasing once marginal costs become higher than them and not when marginal costs start increasing. So I suppose the mistaken intuition is that, well, if our marginal costs are rising, then our average costs should be rising too. This intuition is misguided. The only thing that matters here is whether our marginal cost is higher than our averages or not, and not whether our marginal cost is increasing or not. And this actually means that our marginal cost will go through the minimum of our average cost curves. So I do have another video on that that I will link to below. I won't go through the logic here just because this video is already pretty long and I know for the most part students prefer shorter videos. I also have another video if you need more detail on the connection between our total cost curve and our marginal and average costs. Again, I'm trying not to draw this video out too much. And so that's our cost curves is coming from our total product of labor curve. Really, in order to explain the link, we just need to focus on specialization and diminishing marginal product. I hope the video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Thanks to the viewer who suggested me making this video. I hope you guys are all keeping safe and happy and keeping well.